God's billboard. This message was preached by the prophet as one summer. And he took the book of Matthew. Prophet preaching the Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16. It's a very familiar scripture where Jesus said, We are the light of the world, therefore let your light shine. But tonight, before we shall shine, let us consider the condition that we are in, each one of us tonight. It's a night that I want us to think about anything that you have done that is contrary to the word of God. For when we come to the table, we have to come to the table somewhere with a lonely heart, with a porch heart. Otherwise, we make the word of God of no effect. And so it's in my heart to take that man, David. And we have just read the conversation David had with Nathan. It is things that are done in secret. Remember, we are talking about God's billboard. Before we become that billboard, let us make sure we are clean. Hallelujah. Amen. David, the man after God's own heart, he has so many testimonies. Hallelujah. With his hand, he killed the bird. With his hand, he killed the lion. He brought down Goliath. He has wonderful testimony. The anointing of God was upon him. You could say the Holy Ghost was upon him. But because of the loss of flesh, we are living in a parent time. Every place I turn, there is bad news. There was a friend that called me that I have not spoken to for two years. He and I were in Georgia when I went there. 2006. He is a Christian. He has been to different churches. I've even introduced him to the message at some point. But you see, the message is not for everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. That was a testimony that Abraham gave us. In the message, part of life. That testimony resonated so much to me. He was about a man who the prophet said he was a teacher. He was a professor in a religious college. They have this religious school that this man was a professor in a Lutheran college. And so he wrote about Abraham. According to Brother Abraham, more than 20 pages of letter. This letter was not a friendly letter. This letter was everything wrong you can say to somebody. He called him a soothsayer. He said he drove all the way to come and listen to a preacher. Little did he know he came to listen to a soothsayer. He called for Abraham a soothsayer. He said, Lord, that I know I come to listen to a man who cannot even make a correct sentence. An illiterate. That claimed to be an evangelist. He said, you send yourself to be an evangelist. Nobody sent you. He wrote a stinking 20 page letter. And he said to Brother Abraham. But Abraham read this letter. And he said, how can I respond to this man? And so, he responded this way. He said to the man, Sir, I would have think since you told me you were a Christian, you will find better ways to express yourself. Perhaps, I agree, you said to me, I am illiterate. He said, I didn't go to school. You're right. He said, but you argue with me. You say that Satan can heal. That's one of the arguments of this man. He said, but Abraham said that Satan cannot heal. He said, if you go to Louisiana, you see the witchcraft. You see them. He said, there's one that can turn her back and look again the river. 
And when she comes again, if you're sick, you recover. He said, that's death for healing. Hmm. But what I said to him, I thought you said you're a Christian. Have you two read what Jesus said? If devil can heal, then that means devil is destroying his house. Because his job is to bring sickness. So if devil can heal, so devil has destroyed his own household. He said, I rather believe what Jesus said than what you have said. When the man read the letter from Brother Abraham, he invited him to come to his school and have a meeting. So Brother Abraham said he was a little bit shaky about this. How can I go? Seeing this man's intention. He said, but he summoned enough courage to go. You see, when I was listening to that, he was ministering to my soul about Many things I have seen so far. Sometimes you're talking to people about the message. They look at you like you lost your mind. You might decide to be upset. You might decide to ignore them. But listen to the message. You get your answer from there. So don't act on your own impulse. You see, David here was acting in secrecy. He thought nobody can see him. You see, the things you do in the closet, you see, the statements you make when nobody's hearing you, we want to bring those out tonight before we go to the Lord's table. Because for this cause, many are sick among you and many die. For this cause, there are evil in the world. I turn my ears everywhere, all I hear is divorce. Divorce, every place. Divorce, this person divorced, this person who I've left. It's all over the place. But, but what I'm saying to conclude this little testimony of our prophet, he said, you know, so when he went to the meeting, the man was asking the question. You know, he said, do you believe that the Pentecost have Holy Ghost? He said, because when I went there, the man said, they were just shouting and screaming. What is that? But Abraham said, it's Holy Ghost. He said, that's Holy Ghost? He said, yeah. He said, okay. He said, we Lutherans that sing and, and you know, in the Lord, do we have the Holy Ghost? But Abraham said, yes. He said, oh, I thought we don't have it. He said, yeah. He said, the difference is that the Pentecost have enough of it, they cannot control themselves. So they shout, they jump, you see, he said, but if I can get you and the Pentecost, you and bring it together, hallelujah, then the power of the Holy Ghost will be seen and you become a billboard for people to see. Amen. Hallelujah. If I can get the enthusiasm of the Pentecostal anointing, hallelujah, to those who claim that they are the word, the brother said, then you'll be on fire for the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's about getting the dynamics, hallelujah, to work with the mechanics, hallelujah, and, and you'll be on fire for the Lord. We want tonight to unleash the fire of the Lord. But before that fire, we must all die to our sins. Amen. See, you could not be more righteous than David. Because David is a man according to God's own heart. But when temptation came to David, he fell. That's right. Amen. Amen. When David thought he can do whatever he wants to do, he, he was so comfortable. He became cocky. You know, like some believers, you're cocky. You're, you're no longer conscious of what you say and where you go. You just believe, I'm a message believer, I'm going to heaven. You're no longer concerned of your surrounding, the people around you. You're no longer concerned about what you watch. You're not concerned about where you go. You're not concerned about what you say. And you say, I have the ticket to heaven. You have to watch that sentence. You have to watch that attitude. Because that was the same attitude that David had. And he brought David to sin. And after David sinned, he was still pompous. 
in his behavior that when the prophet Nathan came to him, how are you? Who told Nathan that what David did? Who told Nathan that he killed the, the husband of Bathsheba? Who told Nathan he was thus saying the Lord? Hallelujah! Amen. So when Nathan came to tell me, David didn't know it was about him. That's right. They're talking about somebody else. Uh. It couldn't be me. I'm righteous. You need to kill that man. That's right. All right. Amen. That's For you to be a billboard, mm. you must be clean. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight is a night of cleaning. That's right. Let's wash ourselves from That's inside right. out tonight. Amen. We must be clean. Amen. Hallelujah. When David realized this, he gave us Psalm 51. Give me Psalm 51 from 1 to 12. Psalm 51 from 1 to 12. When David came to his senses, as we are going to count our senses. You see, we, we don't need to fill this place to make it to heaven. No. This church is blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This church is blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. This church is so blessed, we will not believe it. Hallelujah. Yeah. This, this, this young families that have taken the oath of service and, and you dedicated your time of worship, you are already blessed. Hallelujah. Yeah. But all I want us to do is to make sure that we are ready so that we don't get caught on our ways. But as for being blessed, you are blessed. Amen. Yes. Yes. A psalm of David. See, when Nathan the prophet came to him, after he had done what he did to Bathsheba, then a psalm came to him. Let's look at that psalm tonight. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy. Please block out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. In other words, I acknowledge my error. I acknowledge my inabilities. I acknowledge my inefficiencies. I acknowledge my weakness. Do you acknowledge your weakness? Do you acknowledge your inability? Or do you step pompous? Do you die to yourself? If David can speak this word, I am my sin is before me. Hallelujah. Against thee, yes. thee only, have I sinned. I have done this evil in thy sight. That might be justified when you speak, when you clear, when you will judge me. Hallelujah. Let's go. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, that desire truth in what part, not outward, from the inside out. Hallelujah. God desire truth from the inside out. Some families are suffering because they have not caught the revelation of what it means to be a true believer. Hallelujah. Amen. This, my friend, I'm telling you, I introduced him to the message. Then he said, I don't want to believe Abraham. He was a Pentecostal. Now he became a Seventh-day Adventist. I said, okay. I pray for him. He called me 7 a.m. I've not spoken to him for two years. He lives in Georgia. He called me 7 in the morning. I don't take calls that early. But towards the evening, when I was leaving work, I called him. He said, Pastor Paul, you forgot about me. I said, no, I have not forgotten about you. I am just so busy, brother. And I'm very sorry. I said, can I help you? He said, you know, everything is going well. I said, okay. How is your wife? The wife's name is Lisa. I said, how is Lisa doing? Oh, we're no longer together. He said, ah, why? Why, my brother? He said, oh, they gave me all these excuses. They have two children together. I said, okay. I know he has a daughter before he married. So I said, how is your first daughter doing? Oh, she's doing wonderful. I said, is she married? He goes, yes, married and divorced. 
So he is divorced. He got married and divorced within two years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. What is the matter? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not sinking in. When you die to yourself, mm. when you die to yourself, hallelujah, God will take care of these things. Yes. And this is why you're seeing these problems in the families. A true family of God. If God be God, he will watch over his children. If God be God, he will heal his children. And he is God. He is God. I'm holding him. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to hold him. When you know you've done your part, you've got to hold him. Like what Patrick said, you stand. Hallelujah. When you know you've done your part, you stand. Families have been disintegrated. Because the Holy Spirit has not come here for man and woman to die to themselves. The man is itching, the woman is itching. They are fighting every day, they are forcing every day. Because the Holy Spirit is not there. Hallelujah. Amen. You cannot fall the Holy Spirit. No, sir. That's David thought he was righteous. Oh, yes. Then his sin was locked in the closet. But the prophet of God came. Like many people, you have so many locked in your closet. And you're blaming God. Blame yourself. Because God can never be blamed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I perish, I perish. But I've got to believe him until the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Behold, God desired truth from the world. In the hidden part, thou shalt make me know thy wisdom. Punch me with his up. Take that his up. This is the same hyssop that Moses told the people on the day of Passover to dip it in the blood and appear it on your doorpost. Hyssop grows all over the place. Your faith is like hyssop. It is a common faith. It is a simple faith. David said, take that hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Verse 8, my sisters. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which you have broken. I want you to pay attention to this. Hallelujah! David said, the bones which you have broken will rejoice. Now you tell me, how do you rejoice when the bone is broken? It's because when the shepherd takes a stick and breaks the bone of a lamb, it's for that lamb to be closer to be shepherd. So that's why David said, the bones that you broke in, they will rejoice. Because when the bone is broken, as a lamb, I stay closer to the shepherd. So I don't go astray. Hallelujah. Hide thy face from my sin. Block out all my iniquity. Oh, create in me a clean heart. Oh, God. I renew thy spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. I renew thy spirit within me. He broke out in a psalm. Oh, pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Oh, cast me not from thy presence, oh Lord. That's how you should come in the presence of God. Broken down, saying to him, Lord Jesus, if it's not for you, there's nothing I can do. If your hand is not upon me, I am broken into pieces, but you can put me together. I am the work of thy hand. I never made myself. That created me. That gave me this virtue. Hallelujah. Oh, if there be a Sunday, we touch some characters that were able to stand and become virtuous of glory because they became people, because the Lord looked upon them and washed them from head to toe. But tonight, David is speaking to you and I. Hallelujah. Can you hear him speak? 
Did we say amen? Say amen. Say amen. Glory, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Give me first John. First John 1 from 4 to 10, real quick. Hallelujah. Oh, help us, Lord. First John, hallelujah. Oh, we are in sin, but we are born out of sin. Oh, first John. First John 1 from 4. And these things I write unto you. Why? That your joy might be full. Why? This is then the message. Hallelujah. The message which I have heard of him. And I declare it unto you. That God is the light. And in him no darkness at all. Hallelujah. If we say we have fellowship with him. And we walk in darkness. We are now lying. And do not have the truth. Hallelujah. But if we walk in the light. As he is the light. We have fellowship one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ the Son will cleanse us from all our sin. Hallelujah. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. We, and the truth is no longer in us. Hallelujah. But if we confess our sin, that's what we're doing tonight before communion. If we confess our sin, he is faithful. He is just. Oh, to cleanse our sin. To cleanse us, hallelujah, from all, all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. If we say that we have not sinned, now we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Mm, my God, I will not make you a liar, Lord. Hallelujah. Give me Romans 12, 1. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 1. Oh, Jesus, my Lord. I cannot make you a liar. We are sinners, my Lord. We are coming before you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your body. Oh, hallelujah. A living sacrifice. Why? It has to be holy. It has to be acceptable unto God. My friends, we have so many problems because we are not obedient to the word. We are not obedient to the word of God. We have so many trials. We have so many temptations because we are not obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. You might have a season of trial, but after season of trial, there will be a season of breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But all those are from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How can an eagle fly if the nest is not torn apart? And the prophet preached as the eagle will stare the nest. Because that is the word of God. It's in the book of Psalm. As the eagle stare the nest, so does the Lord walk with his children. When the eagle is staring the nest, what does the eagle say? Hallelujah! Oh, I like the way another preacher was putting it. When the eagle is tearing the net, the eagle are not comfortable. They are questioning the mother eagle. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? They are doing it so you can learn to fly. Because if the eagle is in that net, he will not fly. The eagle doesn't know even how to fly. Because the mother eagle is feeding the eagle every day. For the eagle to fly, the mother eagle have to carry the eagle out of that nest and let him fall. When it's about to crash, the mother eagle will scoop him up and scoop him up and put him back in the nest. And when the eagle is comfortable, he comes there and destroy the whole thing. Hallelujah! Then the eagle will know it's time to say, I have to do something. Then the eagle will think, I got the wings. The purpose of the wings was just to embrace myself from falling. That's all he knows. Because the eaglet is about to fall, and you know when you're falling, like, oh, 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 he's trying to do that. He doesn't know that wing is to fly. He thought he just to embrace himself from falling. And when he does that, he says, oh, I can control myself. And the next thing, he's flying all over. Oh, yeah. There is season of trial. But there is season of breakthrough. You have to step through to the word of God. And the breakthrough is as assured as the trial has come. Amen. The breakthrough is as assured as the trial came. Amen. Because it's the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are meant to be holy, acceptable unto God. This is our reasonable service for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And Isaiah put it this way. Isaiah 1.18. 
Oh, no matter how much the sin is. As Kali, give me Isaiah 118 real quick. Then we round up of communion. Hallelujah. It shall be whiter than snow. Come on. Come down, my brother and my sister. Let us now reason together. Let's worship together. Let's reason together. Let's worship together. That's what Isaiah is saying. Let's have fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. Let's reason around the word of God. The message of the hour. It's time for prayer. It's time for communion. Where is everybody else? Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the living God. How long shall they wait? How long shall they wait? Hallelujah. Time is fast spent, my brother and my sister. Oh, yes. It's time to be grounded upon the world. It's time to sell out. Hallelujah. We go to work to make a living. But that's not what we are called to do. We are called to worship God. They that love their God, they shall do great exploits. The message has to be number one. Hallelujah. The word of God. Hallelujah. True, though your sin, they be like scarlet. They shall be white as snow. Though they be like red, like crimson, of course they shall be as wool, which is white. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We are talking about being God's being born. But before we become that, we need to wash ourselves in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. We are looking at the lens of David to see what happens when your sin is before you. The prophet of our day, just like Nathan, he came to expose sin. Hallelujah. So sin is exposed. Yes. He was hiding in the closet, but it's now exposed. And he told us what to do. He told us what to do. But are we doing it? In this message, let your light shine. We shall read the rest of the scripture on Sunday. But the prophet said here, let your light shine. 1961. Hallelujah. Sister, it's 1961. It's a, no, a believer. It's a November, November 3, 1961. Hallelujah. Yeah. Prophet said there, September 3, 1961, I believe. Okay, line 14. Prophet said, I truly, it's only one message you can find it. It's September 3, 1961, sister. Prophet said here, for I truly think it is the duty of every Christian to take communion. Mm -hmm. Duty. Right. So where's everybody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet said, this is our prophet. When the prophet came to David, David gave us Psalm 51. But now he said, prophet, God has sent us a prophet to expose sin. And he's telling us what we must do, not what I think, not what you think. We must do these things. Hallelujah. It's not we can. We must do these things. It is the duty of every Christian to take communion. The Bible says, if you take this not, you have no part with me. And I believe that it's a showdown time. Hallelujah. Paul said, I believe it. It's a showdown time. Oh my. He said many things in this message. But here, it's a showdown time. He even told us of some preachers. Prophet told about some preachers in this message. He said, there are some preachers that God has anointed to, to just, you know, do marriage, you know, kiss the baby, you know, you know, stay, stay around. He said, but they don't go to the field. They are not in the forefront. They don't have a sword to cut the demon. You see now? So it's a different type of anointing that this message brings. That's why we must stand for the truth. We are not here for social gospel. Hallelujah. We are here to pierce asunder the very intent of sin that will walk through that door. Hallelujah. If you walk through that door, if you are not comfortable, it means to change from your way. Amen. That's right. That's right. We are not here to make people comfortable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a showdown time. Showdown time for Christian. If we do not take it, we are not part with him. Yes. If you take it on one knee, then that's why we are preaching to die first. If you take it on one knee, you are guilty of the body of death of Christ. So he gets to a place where he keeps the Christian. Pray up. Hallelujah. Pray up. When you come to 
communion. We should come reverently, solemnly, sacredly, walking up, confessing all our wrongs, praying one for another. Oh my. Not only that, but we should feel if there's a brother, if there's a sister, that's why I'm calling them. Where are my brothers? Where are my sisters? That I have not seen in communion for years. What are they waiting for? I'm ready to cry with anybody. I don't need to wipe anybody's tears. I need to give somebody my shoes. There is time for communion. Where are my brothers and sisters? If you can watch this thing, ask yourself a question. Are you a Christian? This is the word of the prophet. When he came to David, David cried. But he said, word of God has come to us. Are we crying? Are we reverent? But we are complaining. Complain, complain, complain. Die to yourself. Leave the rest for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe that God is still God, friends? Amen. God is still God. Uh, there is a season of trial. That's right. The God we serve told us there was also a season after trial, there will be victory. Amen. It's all seasons. In Ecclesiastic, Solomon put it there. There is a time and season for everything under the sun. That's right. Our prayer is that we don't recognize what season it is. When you see, friends, as a matter of fact, was it on Wednesday? I didn't go to work on Wednesday because I have a headache. I didn't tell anybody I was home. I called my job. I told them I'm not coming. I have a headache. It won't stop. I said, okay, I need to rest. I just sat down. I didn't do anything. Sat down in my chair in my living room. I drank some tea. Hallelujah. I just drank some tea. I just sat down. I didn't call anybody. And keep praying. And my wife said, go to the hospital. I said, I'm not going anywhere. The head of go the same way he came. <laughs> and he went. And here I am. Hallelujah. That is a season. You gotta know what season it is. Hallelujah. You have to know how devil walk. What's the need that just let him do his thing and you know keep marching on. Hallelujah. Because all you have to do is ask yourself, like I say, Lord, I'm I'm a, Lord, I'm in, I'm in your presence. Lord, have I done anything? Lord, what what's good? Lord. Then after you ask that question and you search your heart, just stay. Say, Lord, okay. You do take you take care of it. It's in your hand now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. So you see now, not only that, but you should feel if there's a brother or a sister among us that we feel is just a little bit out of line. Out of line somewhere. Hallelujah. Out of line. Our heart ought to be burning for that person on communion night. Especially so them that they will be able to walk up, walk up and take that communion, not to be condemned with the world, because they are our brothers and our sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's jump a little bit. We're gonna take communion in a second. Go to page 13, just one or two things. The rest we eat on Sunday. Time permitting us by his grace. On part two of it. Hallelujah. Here, the prophet said here, he gave an example on the signpost. We just touched a little bit of it, like I said. Prophet said here, I was driving down the road. I noticed a great billboard. He was talking about a billboard he saw on the road. The billboard said, he said, food in three miles. He said, the billboard said, food three miles. So the issue he said here is, the billboard is saying, in three months, there is food. If you are hungry for food, you are hoping for that three miles. Because when you get to three miles, there will be food. Hallelujah. And so you bring it down to John chapter 5, where Jesus is saying, Blessed are they that hunger and death for righteousness, they shall be filled. Hallelujah. And so that people is saying, there is food. So that people for anyone that's hungry, prophet said, if you're trying to buy a car, it doesn't mean anything to you. But as long as you want food, you know in three miles, you are going to be food. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he turned around to say, we are, the Christians are, the billboard for God. Amen. So if anyone is thirsty and hungry for God, they 
Unless you take a look at me. Hallelujah. That is the word of the prophet. Hallelujah. That's what he said here. Yeah. So we can pray. Let me jump over that. The prophet said here. Yeah. You see? See, the Christians are the people for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, he said that. He said it was a beautiful, said it correct. See, where you turn the corner, but I begin to say, the people wasn't so much, usually, if there's a restaurant around and so on and so forth, usually, but he seemed to have a different approach. You see, he said, I know, I'm coming down, he said, so it pays to begin to think, then they won't have Christianity to pay for advertising. He's talking about, we're not advertising for Christ, we're living a class for Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I notice on this billboard, one thing, he didn't claim to say anything, but a question, if you're hungry, and if you cannot sell any, anybody anything to eat unless they are hungry, the first thing they have to be advertising, you see, the individual is passing by to see it. Now, the only way that the world will ever see Christ is when he see, they see it in you and in me. You see that? Sister, did you see that? See, now, the only way the world will see Christ. Can you search for that, sister? Do you have it? The only way the world will see Christ is when they see it in you and in me. So you should have been searching for that. The only way the world will see Christ. You find that? The only way the world will see, will ever see Christ. It's when they see Christ where? Amen. Hallelujah. Your God's people. The only way the world will see Christ is when they see Christ in me and in you. Hallelujah. 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 That's why before they wanted to see you, Amen. you want to be washed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if you're not washed, what they will see will be ugly. That's right. It will be confusion. Right. Hallelujah. For them to see the real Christianity, you must be whiter than snow, Amen. washed by the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you're not washed by the world, then you're not reflecting the real image. The only way the world will see Christ is when they see Christ in me and in you. That's how important we are. Hallelujah. That's why we are a billboard. This is billboard one. Hallelujah. I want to reflect Christ. Do you want to reflect Christ tonight? Hallelujah. Oh, let's be on our feet. Before we go into communion, I'm going to read just the prayer of the prophets upon the communion that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read that. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prophet said here, he said, let's bow down our heads. Hallelujah. And by 184, he began. Most gracious Father, we are indeed a privileged people to have Christ in our life and in our heart. We are so grateful for him. Our Father, we know that to know him is life. Not to know the creeds, not to know the books, but to know Christ is life. And Father God, we who have found him that way, our Savior, our healer, our strength, our help, our help coming from the Lord, we confess that we are nothing. We know nothing. That's only one thing that we know or desire to know. That's Christ and the power of his resurrection. For everyone that believes it has eternal life. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless this little church and these people that are here on this hot night, on this Sabbath evening here, sitting in this little wooden tabernacle, waiting for the blessings of God. The few mixed up and broken up words that have been given hungering and traveling to see the billboard. God, make us so hungry and thirsty 
that will watch for your billboard and see in the Christians' lives. May we billboard for you. May you reflect your life to a hungry soul that they might hunger when they see the billboard that we are advertising. Christ, our sponsor, has given us a peaceful life of full joy and strength in our soul and to live a life so that people would want to be like him. Grant it, Lord, and eat all for us all. And may there be some here who has not yet found that, that tonight that have been studying and looking along down through life's journey to the different old center people, those old mothers of days gone by, that man that they laughed at on the street corner and they thought out of their minds, standing out there, they were preaching, but pointing that old sanctified mother that went down the street with her hair twisted in the back of her head, dressed old fashioned, and yet we young people might have laughed at them and thought, what kind of an antic is that? But we realize, Lord, that was billboard to eternal life. We pass it by Father. We are sorry, Lord. We are sorry, Lord. Let us go back and retract tonight, Lord. Father, make us like that. Give us life. We want to look like saints before. We want to act like it. That man that we looked at the saint before you, we want to act like that. That man that we spoke evil to, that man that we fought at, he never said a word, but, but was very sweet. He said, that's all right, son. Oh, the Lord bless you. And we laughed in his face. We walked away, oh God, not knowing that that was the billboard, not knowing that that's the man that billboard to advertise eternal life to us. He had Christ in his life. Now we are hungry, Lord. We know where to go. We want to go to this place that the stem points us to Calvary, where we can find a kind of life where a hungry soul can be satisfied. Yeah, it isn't three miles down the road. It's just one step more, Lord. God, make that sinner tonight. Make that one step. Come on to Calvary from the monarch and sin that is in him. May he pull up, close up Calvary just now and, and stop and look up and say, Lord, I have your sign. I am hungry. Fill my hungry soul. Grant it, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, grant it, Lord. Grant it, Lord. My Lord, my God. We don't know how long we have on this earth to do this, Lord. But whenever we have the opportunity, Lord, to come in thy presence, Lord, we live every way that easily beseech us alone. Just live it alone, Lord, and we just come and consecrate on thee, Lord. May you help all oh, these families here, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord, they are so committed, Lord, that each time those doors open, these young boys, young girls, these parents, they are here, Lord. Father, they are not driving all the way to Hackensack because it's a beautiful city, Lord. Father, it's because we have a commitment one to another that in here, Lord, we have dedicated to come before thy presence and cry to you and sing to your glory, Lord, while we are waiting your coming. For we know that one glorious day we will look up and here comes Christ, Lord, and we shall be come up with you, Lord. This is your promise, Lord. This is your promise, Lord. This is your promise, my Lord. And you will never fail in your promise, Lord. But why you wait to come, Lord? We are needy people, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you more than ever, Lord. To bind each family together, Lord. To break the bones of devil around us, Lord. To stop the work of devil around us, Lord. To point that devil back to hell where he came from, Lord. But we are heaven bound. We are sons and daughters of God. He came from heaven to this earth to play our part and our role. And we go back to heaven. We come back to earth where this earth has been clean and clean for us to dwell in, Lord. And 
sanctified for us, Lord. For this earth has to be sanctified by fire, Lord. There has to be a fire baptism upon this earth. Until then, Lord, may you punch every soul that is here, Lord. Do not look at our sin, Lord. As we have prayed, as we have sang, as we have read the Bible, as David had declared, renew in me and you have to, Lord. Pass me on to gentle Savior, my Lord, my God. We are born in sin, shed in liberty. We came to this world speaking lie. There's nothing good in any of us. But Lord, we are consecrating our life, Lord. My Lord, my God, we love you so much. So much, Lord, for what you have done for us, Lord, and continue to do. Your children, my Lord, in obedience to your word, they are not defy your word. They are come believing that they are sons and daughters of God. May their faith rise up and turn the righteousness of Jesus for your name's sake. That we can speak like the Lord, that the oracles of old, we can testify that the oracles of old, as we are dedicating this tabernacle unto thee, my Lord. May you take full glory. May you take full glory. May the glory belong to you. May we have victory, Jesus. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, oh Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I pray with thanksgiving in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. This world is not my home. Give me that song. I'm just passing by. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are in somewhere behind the blue. Don't 
want to see is where is Jesus. Hallelujah. Where is Jesus? Where is the one that died for me? Because only him matters. He's the one that paid the price. Hallelujah. Of course, I would love to see John. I would love to see Brother Abraham. I would love to see Peter. Of course, I would love to see Stephen. But I will love really to see Jesus. It's a different love affair. Hallelujah. For when I behold him, I am going to fall before him. I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to kiss his feet. I'm going to say thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. For without you, my Lord, this is nothing. This is vanity. This is vexation of the soul. There's nothing in this world without the Lord Jesus. What would you wish for? You want to have money? Oh, yeah? Okay, when you have money, you have to have some debts to pay. When you have money, you have to fire people. You have to hire them. You have to have headache. You're not going to sleep in the night. That's right. You put your money in the bank. You're worried. Is the bank open? Is the bank closed? Oh, my. When you're sleeping in the night, you're worried. Somebody knock at the door. Do they have a gun? You're worried. Oh, my. Where is the rest? Hallelujah. And when you say, I don't, want, I don't want to have money, you're going to be begging for food every day. You beg today, you beg tomorrow. They call you all kinds of name. Is that better? No. So, where is the safety net from Christ? The solid rock. Without Christ, this life has no meaning. Hallelujah. No meaning. You will say, but a poor, hold on. You know, when you have a business, you have some money, you're going to be happy. No. Hallelujah. No, that's not when you're happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only happiness is in Christ Jesus. Solomon had everything. Everything. Then he declared, this is nothing. That's when he said, the whole duty of man is to worship God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My whole duty is to worship God. Your whole duty is to worship God. Many young children hear this. Because you will say, Daddy, Mommy, you know, I'm telling my youth, let me do what I want to do. You know, let me run around. You know, oh, young people, don't do that. Oh, don't do that. That's the way to hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Young children, learn, learn young. Hallelujah. I am happy, the children of this church, how committed you are. Remain committed. The young girls singing, hallelujah. Keep singing to the Lord. The young girls back there, the young boys, hallelujah. May the Lord keep blessing you, hallelujah. And we're praying for our brother Fred. If he pleases the Lord that he will stay here, God will make a way. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? You know, if something is in your heart, you have to make it known to the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe our brother belongs here. That's what I believe. I say, Lord, make a way for him. Hallelujah. Amen. You believe you say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. You have to believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever seems good, the Lord say, ask him. Hallelujah. Amen. I love my brother to be here. Hallelujah. Amen. You want a young man like him. He'll be a good influence to this other young man. He's grounded in the world. But it's up to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I've given it to the Lord. So I want him to know. It's in my heart. I don't know the way. God knows the way. Hallelujah. And God will make the way. All we are doing is thinking that God will make the way. Hallelujah. And for each and every one of you, whatever you desire from the Lord is born in my heart. Hallelujah. And our Lord will do it for every one of you. You believed. You trusted the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those that are tightened, they are tightened with all their hearts. And God is looking at you. God knows each one of you. It's not in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. You make the church proud. Proud for Christ. Nobody will walk in here and say that this church is not blessed. That person must be blind. They need to open their eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And what is God doing? He's taking few people. Few, few. You can see them. Few. Hallelujah. Two or three families and God is doing something. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not in the number. You know when the prophet preached this place, it was a very small church. You hear him say, this, this small people here. Actually, he said when he came to, he came to uh, Phoenix, nobody gave him a place to preach in Arizona. 
Nobody gave it for many years. This is the message. Hallelujah. So the message is not popular. It's not for everyone. And that's why I gave you that testimony. When he was talking about the, bro the person that wrote a nasty letter. I was giving you that testimony to mean something. You know, there are many people that have come here and we tell them about the message and you don't see them. And we, we lose hope. Don't lose hope. Keep them in your diet. Call them every now and then. How are you doing? They have seen something in you. Hallelujah. They can run, but they know this is true. This is different. There's something here. That's how the Pope Abraham was there. Do you know that man, after Pope Abraham preached, after that, he said, you know what? They asked for baptism. The same man that wrote him that stinking letter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took it took Brother Abraham thinking before he would act. He thought before he acted. So he acted out of love. Hallelujah. Just let the love of Christ lead you. Hallelujah. Give my way every day with love. We sing that and we're going to have our communion real quick. And no singing after that. Hallelujah. Give me that song. Let me walk, bless the Lord, in the way thou hast gone, leading strength to the Lord, I will, oh, give it cheer, every way to the Son, and I will fill my way every day with love. Resonate from you. For that is the character 
That is the billboard. That is the attitude of Christ. He laid his life for us. And he said we have to lay our life for our brothers and sisters. Let that love always be in your heart. Everything you do, do it out of love. And the Lord bless each and every one of you. I love you with the love of Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 First Corinthians 11, 23 to 34. First Corinthians 11, 22, 23 to 34. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had sought, he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he will come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup, of the Lord and what they shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, you eat and drink that nation to himself, not examining the lost body. For this cause, many are weak, many are sick among you, many sleep. For if we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, and we should not be condemned with this world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when. I come. Shall we take five minutes, everyone, and pray your way? Ask God for the things you need. You have heard the word of God. You have heard the songs of Zion. Now, privately, speak to your maker. He's here to listen to you. There is no need that you have that he cannot solve. It doesn't matter how long he has taken. He's still God. Whatsoever you desire from your heart, and God will ask you, why do you want this? Does it serve his purpose? Whatsoever you desire from your heart, that will serve the purpose of God, the purpose of the elect, God is willing to get it done. You come to him tonight, come by faith. Don't quiver in your faith. Come believing that when you ask, we shall receive whatsoever you ask in his name. If you ask and believe, you will receive, say the Lord. So tonight, present yourself unto him. You have had the word of purging of sin. And I believe the word has purged of sin. So come to him now as one who is forgiven of your sins and ask him for what you need. You and your household. Remember your brothers, your sisters. Remember those you have not seen for a long time. Those that are still perhaps on the side way. Those that are still perhaps they haven't come all the way in. Perhaps they just sitting and watching and looking. You know, sometimes they don't know to believe or not to believe. They don't know where trouble is coming from. Remember them all in prayer tonight. If you know their names, call them by name so our Heavenly Father can hear you. Call them from your heart. Pray with love. Pray with conviction. Pray with love. It is that love that Jesus had for us when he was living this earth before he came back again in Holy Spirit, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. He left with love. Forgive them, Lord. They know not what they are doing. And the same spirit was upon Stephen. When he was about to give up the ghost, he said the same prayer, forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they are doing. He prayed out of love. He didn't pray out of animosity. He didn't pray out of hatred. He prayed a prayer of love. Tonight, my Lord, we are coming to you 
with a prayer of love. Love for our brothers and sisters, Lord. May you look down and see the weak among us, Lord. Brothers and sisters, we haven't seen for a long time. Those that haven't even come to communion for years, my Lord. Oh, households are in danger. Oh, devil is causing a menace to the people. Oh, Lord Jesus. If everyone will understand, Lord, that this is an ordinance we must take seriously, they will do everything they can to be here, Lord. They will run into this house, Lord. When we declare it's a communion night, Lord, Father, but may you not hold it against them, Lord. May you forgive, Lord. May you bring healing to all. May you bring awakening of the Holy Spirit even to their soul, Lord. May they be awake and alive, Lord. For your name's sake, Father, thank you for the message of the hour. Thank you for the vessel of William Mary and Abraham, our prophet, that you used to come. And just light up the light that's in us, Lord, and we can shine and all men shall see. Oh, what a glorious time we're living in, Lord. And we can feast upon the body world. Thank you for the bride all over the world. Oh, Lord Jesus. Wherever the bride got out today, being Friday, many churches are open Friday night, Lord. May you come to them, Lord. Father, we're preparing ourselves for communion, Lord. May you just give us, Lord. Favor need from you, Lord, as we partake of the communion, Lord. May you purify the vessels, Lord, and purge us from sin, Lord. Prepare us for the journey left for us on this earth. Only you can see us to the end, Lord. Thank you for every family. Thank you for Brother Patrick and his family. Thank you for Brother Solomon and his family. Thank you for Brother Anthony and his family. Thank you, Lord, for all the mothers that are here. Sister Rosemary, Sister Rose, and Sister, Sister Veronica. Oh, Lord Jesus, Sister Joyce, thank you for all the mothers, Lord. Thank you for the young girls, Lord. Sister Lovins, Sister Corinthia, Lord. Jesus, Shana, Lord. And Sister Mary, Lord. Thank you for these young girls, young boys, Lord Jesus. Brother, Brother Gideon, Paul Junior, Michael, Lord. And but I need, Lord Jesus, may you bless this young boy's Lord and Brother, Brother Dave, where he will be, Lord. Father, we have not seen Brother Ernest for a while, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, may you help him, Lord. May you show him how to be committed to your word, Lord. Father, Father, we have not seen Sister Violetta for a while, Lord. I know that the household has been broken in pieces, Lord, but. Who can put together, Lord, the work of devil, but we don't recognize you, devil of destruction, but we are praying for their souls, Lord. If they are lost in flesh, let their soul be saved, Lord. May you have mercy, Lord, on Sister Violetta, Lord, and may you bring her back to the stronghold of the mission of the hour, Lord. And Sister Claudia, I believe she was here a few weeks ago, Lord, it was good. As she came, but may you help her to come even more, Lord, because we are preparing to go away soon, Lord. My Lord, what I want, Lord Jesus, Sister Zoe. Father, this family needs you more than ever, Lord. They need you more than ever. Make you make a way for them. To Lord Jesus, to kill them, Lord, fire upon them to come to communion. When the doors are open, Lord Jesus, for it is true dedication of service, Lord, that we can defeat the enemy and all his ploys, Lord. When we do what we are supposed to do, then we stand. Lord Jesus, help this family, Lord, and, and their daughter, Lord, who, Lord, help her to just be obedient to the word. And, and brother Isaiah as well, Lord Jesus, may you help this family, Lord Jesus. Father, we have not seen Buddha, but a Sylvester for a long time, Lord. He was coming to fellowship with his wife, Lord, and his wife was just standing on the corner. Don't know what to believe or what not to believe. But Lord Jesus, we don't see her anymore. I remember she was crying one day, Lord. Crying for prayer, Lord, when she was trying to pass her exam. And you help her to pass her exam, Lord. And she knows that this word of God is true. 
May you rekindle this family, Lord. Where shall they go? Where will they find the truth? The truth is in the message of the hour. May you reveal unto them that this is the truth. There's no more truth but this, Lord. May the word come, Lord, and adjudicate for them, Lord. Only you can do it, Lord. You will get the glory. Lord Jesus, many families we have seen that come through this door. Some came for baptism. Some come to eat food. But Lord Jesus, may you give them spiritual food in due season. Not just physical food. May they eat the spiritual food and be fed and become light of the world for this neighborhood to see that the church of the living God is alive even here for your name's sake. May we fight a good fight that we can finish the cause. And when the battle is over, we shall wear a crown. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my life. Thank you for all that you are for me. I love you, Lord. Thank you. Without you, we will pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
as we raise this cup, Lord, we remember many gallant soldiers who once raised a similar cup all the way to Pentecost, Lord. When the disciples will come together to break the bread at the first of the week, all the way to our prophet, even when he preached this message, let your light shine, they broke the bread. And they've all eaten of the bread, and they've all given up the body, and you have received the soul and the spirit. Father, it's our time to do the same thing, Lord. We do this by faith, knowing fully well we are doing what you told us to do. Father, may you help us, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Every family here needs you more than ever, Lord. As we partake of this, drinking this wine, our blood has many impunities, Lord. There are many things that frighten our body, Lord. The blood is what carries our oxygen. Our life is in the blood. When we drink this wine, Lord, may you cause a revival from inside the body, Lord. When it comes contact with the blood, may there be a rejuvenation of the blood, Lord. May we touch you, Lord. Like the woman with the issue of blood, touch the hem of your garment, Lord. May it be done, Lord. We come by faith, believing it is done, Lord. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All things are ready. Come to the feet, amen. Come for the people.